All right, final sprint. So we're going to bring up the energy with disturbance. Um, site news, like others, we were recommended for funding, which is great because that means hopefully we're off probation. So that's great. Uh, we've heard about some of the other synthesis efforts. I'm going to talk about our disturbance. It was the lowest sea ice year ever recorded um, for the Antarctic. Um, long partnerships with NASA is going well. New additions. Uh, we think we found a new species of fish. We have uh, applied it and we're naming it after the Gould, which is a ship we've been using for 20 years that's being put out of service. So it's our <laughs> farewell tribute to where we've spent much of our life. Scaling, um, we sort of approach it that we can't understand anything at our site, you know, um, on the local scale. Local for oceanography is the size of Oklahoma. Um, and so the Amundsen Sea Low um, essentially drives how the Pacific flows into the Antarctic. And that determines how much heat we have. And we're on the receiving end of it. That response to the heat is then modified over regional scales. And for a lot of the ocean, it's uh, related to circulation variability and ancient glacier topography, especially near the coast. So it ties really nice with the dry valley stuff. Um, and then those two processes influence all the interactions in terms of the physics driving the food web, including the phenology, which has been a big focus of how these large scale processes is altering the phenology. Sort of a case example of how the variability in the sea ice driven by that Amundsen sea low impacts things in sort of ways we don't expect. Um, it has a big impact on the food web. You can look that upper one, the abundance anomaly for Antarctic krill. It's got a cyclical pattern that's sort of driven by El Nino, La Nina oscillations. Um, and what we've been finding is if you look at the carbon flux uh, from the surface into the deep ocean, it's really driven by krill. 70% of the carbon POC flux is krill related, despite lots of other zooplankton critters in our traps. And if you look at sort of the drivers of that, it's adult krill, big krill, big poop, sinks that dominates the carbon flux. What's interesting though, is when you have adult krill, krill numbers are low. You haven't had a large recruitment year. And so when you have a lot of carbon export flux because of adult krill, you have potential food limitation for the higher tropic levels. So we've been seeing as we've been warming, um, increasingly the krill population is getting older and we have the first indications that whales uh, pregnancy rates might be food limited. So what's good for carbon export may not be good for the food web if you're a higher tropic level. We've added a new component, which is landscapes. You know, not intuitively as the system warms, we get way more snow than we used to and a lot of moisture. The problem is, is we have a very conservative polar community, especially the Delhi penguins, and they lay their eggs in locations that have a lot of runoff. So we're seeing a lot of recruitment failure. You can see the mom down below with her eggs in the pond because the eggs drown. And that's in part because they never really did dealt with extreme moisture. This year was dramatic. That's a sea ice duration at the top, 71 days. The lowest we'd ever seen was 120. And what's really kind of scary, the science side is awesome experiment. Human side freaks you out. Um, it's sort of an ocean wide phenomena for the Antarctic that started in 2016. So maybe we're in seeing the transition, you can see the change in winter temperature. So in terms of legacy, these are the process if you wanna model the formation of sea ice. And what's very critical for sea ice formation is that winter water, that's remnant water that's left over when you form sea ice the year before. It gets up well, it's cold, promotes the formation of that ice. And you're looking here at sort of two climatologies. The top one's the important one. The black line's the climatology. You see that coal layer? That's that winter water layer. This year, where we have no sea ice, 
we have no winter water layer. So potentially we have a memory of the system that's gonna feed back to less sea ice the next year regardless. Doesn't mean the system can't recover, but that's something we're gonna be focused on. So I will end there. <laughs>